Hello everyone and thank you to another episode of FK Irons Live and today I have the Spectra Direct 2 tutorial. I'm redoing it because Comcast doesn't want to cooperate with me today. But anyway, uh, we're going to redo it as many times as you know needed. So right here I have the new Spectra Direct 2. This is our latest machine. This is what we call a crossover machine. And uh, the reason why it's called a crossover is because this machine was designed to work uh, with cartridges or standard needles and perform the same way without having to tweak the machine in any particular way or adapt in any particular way. So uh, we're going to be unboxing the content and uh, let me make sure that we're live right now. Yes, we are live. Finally, guys, sorry. Uh, Comcast in my area, for those who don't know who, who Comcast is, is my internet provider. So I don't know what happened. Every time I do a live broadcast, they disconnect me. So I'm trying again. Uh, here we are. So we're going to be unboxing the contents right here and uh, let's move this aside and let's start with the machine. So the first thing that you're going to realize is we have a sleeve, we have the, the top of the box and then we have finally the content. So at a glance you should find the machine, the two stroke caps, you're going to use those to actually uh, tweak the stroke. You, uh, you can change it from 3.4, 2.8, 4.0 millimeters and also you have the stroke removal tool. I'm going to explain to you guys how to use this tool because a lot of people wonder what is this tool for. So I'm going to show you guys how to use that and uh, what it's for. Now we have right here the little baggie that contains some uh, tools, uh, spare screws and spare o-rings and one of the things that you guys are going to realize is that we don't have lubrication and the reason being is because this machine does not require any lubrication or maintenance whatsoever. So this is one of the simplest machine you can get yet super reliable, straightforward. It doesn't have any uh, give adjustment. However, you're going to be able to achieve uh, smooth blends or really solid lines by simply dialing the voltage and of course, you know, uh, training your hand. So we're going to extract the machine right here. And what I want to show you guys is how small this machine is. Uh, you can use my hand as reference, this machine is very compact. In fact, it's probably smaller than the other crossover machine, which is the Spectra Halo 2, because it lacks of the give uh, mechanism in the back. But kind of like the same, but this one is a little bit more uh, compact. Now, let's just dive in through the features of this machine. Let's start with the vice. So, this is our patent pending vice system. We introduced this vice system with a Spectra uh, Direct. I'm sorry, with the Spectra Edge X, that was the first machine. I created this back in 2012, 2013, we released the first model. And now this vice system is what it's going to allow you guys to use any type of grip. So I have a couple of grips right here. Uh, I have a click ergo right here that is a cartridge grip that you can see how easy it is to uh, put a vice and actually remove it. Very, very simple. You can also use, um, this type of uh, disposable grips, very simple. So this gives you the, the chance of use any grip you want. It's a little bit dirty because this is the one I use here for the demos. Now, the other advantage about this vise is should you have one of these grips right here, the screw on type, all you're going to do is remove the, uh, the chalk and the internal collet. The collet's right here is that floating part right here. You just remove those two and you're going to be able to screw on uh, this type of vise, the screw on vise right onto the machine and you're going to be able to use cartridges with no problem as well. So this is the very first vice system that uh, gives you all these uh, benefits of using whatever you guys want. Now moving forward, uh, the next uh, feature that makes this machine very, very unique is this little knob right here. This little knob right here. Uh, and what is that little knob? Well, that little knob is actually uh, the adjustable tensioner for the needle bar or dry bar. This is the very first direct drive machine that has an adjustable tensioner. Um, before this machine, every single direct drive, you have to use either uh, one rubber band, two rubber bands, or maybe an O-ring, or a bunch of rubber bands of different sizes to get the right amount of tension that you want. And now, with this mechanism right here, you're gonna be able to actually tweak and micro dial that tension on the needle uh, for the first time on a direct drive rotary. And I'm gonna show you guys how it works. So. Let's switch again to the uh, to this view right here. So basically, you're going to introduce the needle or dry bar through the vise, and you're going to go under this little bridge, this little rubber piece that you see right there. And what you're going to do is you're going to twist the needle bar, and you're going to clip it on onto this 
little thing that's another feature that I'm going to talk right now. The first thing that I want to do is I want to show you how this thing works. So uh, we're going to actually use this grip right here. And we're going to be powering the, the machine as well. So I am going to put a cartridge. This is one of my favorite ones. This way. So this is one of my favorite cartridges. It's uh, the 9 Magnum right here. So we have the machine set up right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this machine. I have my critical power supply right here. I'm going to show you guys the voltage. Probably you're going to see it like upside down. Uh, but we're at 7.1 volts right here, and we're going to fire the machine. As you guys can see, this machine is very, very, very silent. So what I'm going to try to do right now is I'm going to exaggerate vibration and noise. Mind you, this machine is very, very, very stable, but obviously if we crank it like it around, you know, super high volts, I don't know, 11 volts, you can hear the machine kind of like rattling a little bit. And this is something that every single direct drive has to deal with, but with this adjustable... <clears throat> this adjustable vice system, all you have to do is simply tweak that little knob right here at the bottom to stabilize the needle. Now, as you can see, the machine right now, I'm going to bring it down to a uh, normal operational voltage. Probably, if I would be shading with this machine, I would be in the neighborhood of the A volts. You can see how smooth it is. Obviously, with cartridges, you know, you have the grip that constrain the dry bar. Uh, sometimes there is not that much of necessity of applying tension, but sometimes, you know, those grips, especially disposable, you know, they can have the hole a little bit bigger and therefore you may have a little bit of audible, uh, audible feedback. So by adjusting or tweaking this tensioner, you're going to be able to control the amount of tension that's applied to the dry bar to give you a, a smoother performing machine. Now with standard needle, the same thing is going to happen. You're basically going to put the same standard needle the same way as I showed you before and uh, you're going to be able to uh, tweak the um, the needle bar. Now, it's not recommended that you bend the needle with this uh, direct dry. Everything has been designed to be perfectly aligned. Probably, if you want to gain a little bit of extra tension, it's just bend the needle stack rather than bending the bar. That's something that I'm going to recommend because uh, you may be putting excessive tension, causing the motor to overwork, and we don't want that. So, uh, that's how it works. So now, I'm going to switch back to the overhead camera. We're going to remove this cable for a second. Uh, again, to remove the grip is very simple. Loosen the vise and we're going to show you guys how to use the armature clip. This is the very second machine that we have with this feature right here. And I'm going to try to zoom in so you guys can see with detail what this thing is all about. There you go. So the armature clip basically removes the need for grommet. So remember before and I mean before and most of uh, tattoo machines out there, you have to put a little grommet right here, a little piece of rubber to supplement the eyelid of the needle. Otherwise, you're going to have the needle wiggling in the armature uh, pin or the armature bar if you're talking about a coin machine. Now, with this mechanism right here, this is actually a clip that adapts to most needles out there. So, so far, I haven't found a needle that doesn't work, but uh, one of the benefits about this is that now you no longer have to worry about the needle bar I'm sorry, the rubber band or the grommet. Now, once you go through, once you go through the the, the adjustable tensioner, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, tilt the needle just a little bit, and you're going to pop it with your nail, and that's it. And that's how you install the needle there, and the needle's there to stay. It's not going to move or or go anywhere. So you can rest assured that this thing is going to work, and it's very very resistant. So to remove the needle is very simple as well. All you're going to do is use your your nail and just pop it out and extract it and there you go and this is how you remove the needle so i am going to zoom out again there you go about there and um, what i'm going to be doing right now guys is i am going to be showing you how easy it is to set up this machine versus perhaps other machines that require uh, the rubber band and the grommet you know Fiddling with the gram is always a pain in the butt and finding the right tension sometimes a pain in the butt so now i have a needle bar right here so if i would want to start tattooing, this is all I have to do. Insert the needle bar, put it right there, put this right here. That's it. It's very, very, very quick. So I'll do it like now close up so you guys can see that I'm not cheating or anything right here. So uh, let's pretend this is either the needle bar or the actual driver in this case. Uh, to set this machine up, it's very, very easy. You're going to introduce this over here. 
pop it, clip it, insert the tube. There you go. That's how easy it is. Now to break down, it's exactly uh, the same way as you actually did it before. So this is how you are going to extract the needle bar. And that's it. I always uh, opt for extracting the needle this way. Uh, some people do this. You know, they actually pop it open and they extract it this way. I don't like to do that because when you do that, if you have, you know, a dirty dry bar, you're going to actually uh, dirty up your machine and you never want to do that. So it's recommended that you always extract the needle this way, actually through the vise. So you can ensure that nothing uh, gets, you know, in between the machine that has probably touched uh, blood or any of the blood boring pathogen. So that's it guys. This is the very, very, uh, a very easy to use machine. Now we're going to move forward and I want to talk about the stroke adjustment. Uh, stroke adjustment is also very, very simple to, uh, to change. All you're going to have to do is swap this cap that you have right here and we're going to swap it for any of the two that come in the box. So again, we're going to switch to the overhead camera right here. So I'm going to bring the box so I can show you the contents. Remember when I told you guys about this little tool right here? This little tool basically mimics uh, the motorball system, right? It's kind of like a dummy. It's a plastic thing. So what this is going to do is go, it's, it's going to engage with a stroke and it's going to lock it. Uh, so that's going to prevent the stroke, you know, trying to spin while you're trying to uh, loosen the screw. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to remove the motor now. We're going to put the motor aside. We're actually going to put this tool right here, and let's choose uh, a cam. Let's say I'm going to install the four millimeter now. So I have the four millimeter cam right here, and let me show you guys how this uh, looks close up. So this is the top side, and then we have right here the bottom. So let's not confuse it because it goes like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert this guy right here and try to try to lock it with a uh, with a stroke. You don't have to go all the way down as long as it locks, you know, you're going to be good to go. In fact, we do not recommend that you go all the way in cuz sometimes it's hard to uh, uh, get it out. So right here. So right now we're going to work with this little allen key, but because I want to do this faster, I'm going to use this tool that I have right here. It's exactly the same size. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen the screws. Let me make sure that I lock it properly first. There you go. So we're going to loosen the screws right here one at a time. And it's recommended that you kind of do it like incrementally and be careful because those screws are, those screws are tiny. So we're going to remove the screws here. We're going to put them there. And now we're going to pop the cap by holding the armature clip. Now check this out I put two on the side. Now what you're going to realize is that the armature clip is actually uh, stuck in the cap. So what you're going to do is you're going to put a little bit of pressure and the armature clip is actually going to come out. So it's mounted on a bearing. Now we're going to take the other stroke cap, which is this one right here, remember so the four millimeter. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip it up and we're going to insert the armature the same way it was on the other stroke cap. So right now we have connected the armature to the stroke cap. And what you're going to do is you're going to try to line up the two screws with the two holes. That's the only way you're going to be able to put the screws and we're going to install the screws right there. And you're probably going to do this once or twice, or, you know, a lot of people have different bodies and they just opt for, um, you know, setting up two different bodies using the same motor with, um, with it, with the same, uh, you know, different body with the same motor. So there you go. And this is how we have installed the, um, the cam. Now we're going to remove this, uh, be patient. And this tool comes out. Now the machine is ready to go. We're going to engage the motor again, and we have installed the four millimeter uh, stroke cap. So this is going to give you, of course, four millimeter displacement. I recommend that you guys always put the the other stroke cap back in the box so you don't lose it. It's very tiny, and also put the um, put the tool right there. So right now we have a machine with a four millimeter stroke, and we're ready to rock and roll now. We uh, talked about the vise, we talked about the adjustable needle tensioner, which is one of the main highlights of this machine. We talked about the needle clip, which is also one of the main highlights of this machine. Uh, this machine, you can change the stroke. It doesn't have give adjustability, but this machine is going to give you a versatility of work. So who is this machine for is a question that I guess get asked all the time. So this machine is actually 
I would say it's for everyone because this machine is ideal for traditional work. You're going to be able to crank those solid, uh, solid lines, yes, lines, sorry, solid lines, single pass with no problem. You're also going to be able to do a lot, uh, very smooth black and gray by dropping the vaults a little bit or by switching to a smaller uh, cam or stroke cap. A lot of the times, the softness of, of, of the transition, of a transition, has to do with the stroke as well. Uh, usually, this, the shorter the stroke, the softest uh, the transition is because the dots are closer together. So don't confuse that this uh, direct drive machines cannot give you that perfectly smooth work because a lot of people actually relied on this type of machine for that type of work. Also for color blending, you know, these machines are great for color blending because by simply training your hand and figuring out which stroke works best for you, you're going to be able to achieve those results. Now, I want to talk a, a little bit about parameters because this is something that a lot of people have a lot of questions. Uh, what is the right voltage for this machine? And like I always mention, there is not just a right voltage for tattooing, but this machine is going to start giving you power um, as low as 4 volts. So as low as 4 volts, you're going to be able to crank this machine and start poking holes or you know points or dots especially for those that do pointy listen that really like the machine to run really uh really soft and really slow this machine is going to be able to do that now if you want to do that type of work like pointy listen work i recommend you switch probably to the four millimeter stroke or stay with a 3.4 those are the two longest uh stroke that the machine comes with so those are going to give you the timing and the torque to actually uh you know, poke holes and and allow you to uh, to get some some force. You know, and get you uh, get you in there in the skin. Now, for for lining, I recommend that you guys try this this machine around eight and a half, maybe nine and a half volts. That would be an ideal parameter to push maybe most lining. But also, if you're going to be working with uh, single liners, you know, tie three or tie fives, probably you want to stay below that uh, range, maybe around the seven to seven and a half. And again every artist is going to be different so uh, don't take these parameters as you know fixed parameters experiment with the machine and like i always say always better to start very very low in the voltage and start picking up speed as you start getting comfortable with the machine so um you know in that way you're going to be able to tell what works for you what else can i say about this machine well this machine uses the motorball system and again i am going to switch to the overhead camera right here uh what you're going to do to remove the motor, like I mentioned before, just quarter twist and the motor comes off. Now, this machine right here is the version two of the Spectra Direct One. The Spectra Direct One is the first machine that introduced this mechanism where the stroke actually is being housed in the body rather than on the motor. And why is that? Well, it's very simple. As you guys can see, this stroke right here is actually mounted on this big, big bearing, right? And that big bearing has a hex drive cut. We also have a patent on this mechanism. Uh, we call it the hex drive mechanism. So what that's going to allow you to do is going to allow you to use the motor uh, and switch it in between machines that use the same uh, mechanism, right? So, But the benefit of this is that the motor doesn't suffer any side-to-side uh, -side forces, actual for, uh, radio forces, actually. Uh, the motor's not going to uh, suffer from radial forces on the shafts. Therefore, all the forces and all the, um, you know, the radial forces are being uh, constrained here in this bear bearing right here. And as you can see, it's a big, tough bearing. So it's very rare that you're going to have any problem with this bearing once you uh, get this machine going. Now, a lot of people use this motor and perhaps this machine and a Spectra HX, because I have it right here. Let me just show you both. I'm actually going to remove the motor. Sorry about the noises. Uh, so this is the uh, Spectra Direct 2. Now I am going to plug the same motor in the Spectra HX. And I'm actually going to power the machine as well. So as you guys can see, you know, we can power this machine with this motor or we can power this machine with this motor. This is a benefit because a lot of the guys, you know, still like to line with standard needles. So if you're one of those guys that you know use cartridges for everything else and perhaps you know your 14 round liners you'd like to use a direct dry machine well this is actually a pretty handy setup because you can only back one motor with a cable disconnect the machine and switch to your cartridge machine in this case the spectra ejects without having to uh, have two motors and disconnecting the machine at all times so that's the feature about this machine now guys i am going to be taking some questions let me just go back to the 
to the chat. It's actually getting out of control. And I don't know if I told you guys, at the end of this live broadcast, I am going to be giving you guys a code for you guys to redeem $50 off should you be interested in getting this machine today in the next hour. So the code is only going to work for an hour and uh, you're going to be able to save $50. And that's a thank you from FKR for watching this live broadcast. What else? So people are loving the Spectra Direct 2. Eddie Bermudez loves his Direct 2. What else? <laughs> so Texas Blue Rock has Comcast and always has uh, internet problem like I do. <laughs> Ernie was getting a little bit anxious because we couldn't get connected. Uh, mine's still in the box, blah, blah, blah. Mine's still in the box, shaking my head, not for long. You should use it. You should use it. All I got done, all your size, blah, blah, blah. Okay, guys, in Spanish, after this live broadcast in English, I'm doing another one in Spanish, which is going to happen right now, actually, in five minutes. We're going to be a little bit delayed, guys, so excuse me. Uh, Visual Visionary is, uh, is asking, can you make the Spectra Halo 2 101? Of course, I am going to make probably next week the Spectra Halo 2 uh, tutorial, and I'm also going to do it in Spanish and English, so you guys can get, uh, you know, all the tips uh, that you guys want to hear from me, and uh, I'll give you a lot of the technical features of that machine. Now, this video is going to be archived, so if you have a question, make sure to drop your question down below in the comment box, and I, I'm going to be monitoring uh, the comments and, you know, replying to any questions you guys may have. This is happening live right now, just so you guys know, and we have a lot of people interacting live, but sometimes the live uh, chat disappears after the live is gone. So if you have a question, make sure to enter your comments here down below. Now, do you guys want to get a Spectra Direct 2 today in the next hour? So I have prepared a code for you guys. And the code is this one right here. Can you see it? D2, one hour, all uppercase. D for direct, two for direct two, one hour because the code is only gonna last for an hour. So you're gonna have until nine o'clock to actually a, uh, redeem. And how are you gonna do that? You're gonna go to fkirons.com and redeem the code. I'm gonna type it right here really quick, uh, really quick for you guys. fkirons.com and uh, re Redeem code is on D2. Okay, just like that. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. D2. D2. All together. D2 one hour. That's the code. So, guys, uh, thank you for watching this video. If you wanted to hear this video in Spanish, it's coming up right now. So thank you for being so supportive and you can get this gear or anything that you have seen right here at fkorange.com. See you guys uh, in the next video. Thank you so much.